Before we start, I would like to point out that this video is only meant for trained personnel. Now, if you get an installation error message from the inverter via SolarWeb, for example, it is necessary for you to check up on the module field, the arrays, and do some testings. If these error messages only occur temporarily in bad weather conditions, for example, we would also like to point out that the tests that we want to show you in this video should be carried out in such weather conditions so that it is comparable. There are special PV measuring devices out in the field for exact insulation and resistance values. Um, however, in this video, we want to show you a simple measuring method with only a multimeter. In preparation for this test, we would want to turn off the DC disconnector switch on the inverter and also disconnect from the AC side. In our next step, we want to open the front cover with two quick locking screws at the bottom. Next up, we have again five quick locking screws in order to get to the connection area. Next up, we want to disconnect our Vago terminal plugs on the DC side from the actual inverter. We can now set our multimeter to DC voltage measurement, take our red measuring strip and connect it to our inspection kit for our Gen24 series. Now this is basically the counterpart for our terminal plugs here on the inverter side. If you do not have this inspection kit, no worries, you can directly measure as well with the multimeter, with the measuring tip on the Vago clamp itself. We then take our black measuring tip and measure against ground or earth. Due to the capacitive effect on PV modules, it might take a few seconds until this value drops down to zero. We can repeat this measurement for the DC minus pole as well and repeat it for every string that we have connected. If we do not have a, a measurement around zero, but we have a permanent and steady voltage measurement, this means we have an insulation error. We do the same testing on the minus pole again and see that the value will drop down nearly to zero. All right, we have now seen how a correct insulation measurement should look like. Now let's see how a faulty one does look. We have now a test system here up and running it's with four modules in serial connection. Each one has 55 volts and we have now built in an insulation error in order to show it to you. Now we again test from DC plus to ground and DC minus to ground. The first one gives us a value again around zero, so no uh, insulation error measured. We do the same testing now for DC minus and measure to ground. And we can now read a static voltage measurement and insulation voltage of minus 220 volts. This means we have an insulation error. Now this brings us to step number two in our, in our testing scenario. We now have the possibility to closer localize the, the position of this fault. And it is very simple to do by taking the measurement that we got, 220 volts, and divide it by the nominal voltage of our module, 55. This gives us the number four. So we know now that the first module in our array or the connection cable from the first module to the inverter is the position of our insulation error. And for us, this now gives us the opportunity to check out closely this connection area and this module for 
insulation areas on the cable, a faulty junction box, a faulty uh, contact point, or even just a crack on the backfoil of the module. 